<laughs> What's good, YouTube? It's Rage Rail. So, in today's video, I want to show you how to destroy this mid blitz meta in college football 25. So, if you enjoy this video, go and drop a like on the video right now. Go ahead and sub and turn on post notifications on. So, as of right now, I am in the BYU playbook. Again, I'm in the BYU offensive playbook. Now, um, before I get into this video, I do want to say I do have an ebook on this gun trips halfback week formation. So if you're curious about this, if you want to learn more about this formation, I actually put out about a couple different videos on this formation. So go check my previous videos. And also, this is available on my website, allthingsmadden.com. And the link to that is in the description. Now, quickly, I just want to uh, talk about this little, it's a, basically a run scheme. And I'm also going to give you a passing concept that you can use for pretty much any defensive formation if they decide to not run mid blitz even if they do you still be able to run it now y'all do see i have my uh picking on so if y'all didn't know i'm actually a picking coach um i coach at the junior high i'm the head coach of the football team there and we had pictures today so uh some of my junior high players watching this <laughs> yeah i'm recording this today so um we have pictures and also uh the season will be starting here very soon so it's been hard for me to get on here and grind like i want to so for the next couple months it's going to be kind of hard for me to push out content but i'm going to do my best uh so y'all just bear with me so uh, i also help out with the varsity football as well so it's just a lot you know and we're coming up on football season as y'all know so just want to make sure i did mention that um so let's go in and dive right into this so uh, before I do actually um, so I have 20 playbooks that this little run scheme can be found in so when I say run scheme what I'm talking about is um if we go here so the only two run plays we're going to talk about is going to be halfback off tackle and halfback direct so when you run this gun trips halfback week these are the playbooks that have both halfback direct and off tackle and also you should be able to check this the description of this video i will have the playbooks listed out so no you don't need to memorize these 20. so the 20 are alabama app state arizona state boston college buffalo byu cincinnati fresno state hawaii illinois kansas kentucky louisiana tech nebraska northwestern penn state pittsburgh uab washington state and wisconsin and again i'm gonna have that in the description so if you forget check there but all those following playbooks will have these two run plays now when i talk about the pass plays you can literally choose any one of these pass plays you see and we're going to custom uh you know make every single route so it doesn't matter what the play art looks like right here we're going to create all of our route concepts so we can have something universal to beat if you want to be able to throw the ball okay and if you're curious about more i have an ebook on it all right so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start off with uh, we're going to come out and have back off tackle and we're going to go to this double mug. And uh, now here is how I'm going to do it. All right. So I'm going to come out mid blitz every time. But uh, some of your high level opponents are going to try to mix in these others. So they might try to just run a base cover three. Uh, if you're you know, they may try to run this nickel dog three buzz. I see this a lot as well. Or they'll run this nickel two trap. I see that a lot as far as a mix up. And every now and again, they'll just run just regular base cover one if they are just getting if they're not able to get the blitz home. So we'll talk about how to block the blitz. We'll talk about how to run on the blitz and we'll talk about how to throw on the blitz. So if you're struggling against double mug a gap, uh, you know, the mid blitz where they're going to do an a gap nano essentially. I got y'all. So we're going to come out in mid blitz though. All right. Uh, so your most common setup when it comes to this mid blitz, most of the time they're going to press they're going to crash their defensive line inside, so slant inside, and they're going to take their user, and they're going to find the open gap. First, they're going to take the user that's on the running back, and they're going to find their open gap. Sometimes it's here. Some players will come over here. Now, most of the time, they're not going to do this because uh, they don't want to get beat on like a table route. So most of the time, they're going to stay over the running back. If they stay over the running back like this, and they're going to play man coverage, oh, you're going to be able to run the ball a lot. So for one, I'm going to talk about if they don't adjust this guy right here. Uh, so we'll start off with that first. All right. So most of the time, they're going to hold this gap right here. When you see that, you want to make sure you go to have back off tackle. OK, uh, now I want you to get used to this. You don't have to do this versus man. OK, I'm going to show you what happens first. We could really just run this normal. If you have time, I like to always ID this guy just to make sure. And what's going to happen here is that we're going to be able to take this straight outside. And I mean, you know, self-explanatory on this note. Now, this works because the user is going to be on the running back side. So he's just almost never going to be able to. Uh, 
he'll, for him to guard this, he's going to have to take his user and run straight down the line. And even still, a lot of times, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one with you and that guy. And a lot of times, you can just outrun him to the outside. So uh, that's what it looked like most of the time. And again, um, I want to show you the same thing. So if they actually take this guy right here and they bring him down to the line of scrimmage, most people will do this right here. Um, and I'm not pass committing just yet. I'm not even pass committing at all. Um, and I just want to show you that nothing really changes. It's going to be the same thing, except for now you have an even wider hole to hit. And normally you're going to pick up about seven, eight yards at least. Most of the time, at least seven or eight. And if they want to keep playing this like this way and not changing nothing, you have to keep running the ball. All right. Keep using that halfback uh, tackle. Now, if for some reason it's not working, what I found out is, um, well, first I want to mention this too. So. If they are crashing their line, um, I like to use off tackle, which is hard for you. You won't be able to tell, but uh, I'll run it one more time for you to see. Um, as we just pretty much just outran that guy. But if they're not crashing their line or they're doing something crazy, uh, if they're just coming down here and, you know, just running it this way, which some people will. Some people won't really mess with their uh, defensive line. Um, I want you to sprinkle this in, okay? We're about to talk about the halfback direct. So I want you to sprinkle, and I know it doesn't show it right here, but... When you run the halfback direct, for some reason, I have the most success with this when I ID this D-tackle right here. I don't know why, but when I ID this D-tackle that's on the running back side, uh, it normally works a lot better as far as the blocking. As right there, of course, they did not pick them up. But most of the time, when they do actually pick them up like they're supposed to, it works uh, It works pretty good. So I'm going to leave it right here. And again, I'm not crashing my line just because we're trying to simulate every type of scenario you could face. Also, you could keep running halfback tackle all day. Um, we'll talk about that uh, as far as they're crashing it, but uh, the gap is there. I know it's kind of hard to see, but uh, practice mode, this is on Heisman. Um, I should have did this earlier. I like doing this for all my videos, and this is to make sure we're being transparent. We do have the offense on Heisman, and the defense is on Heisman as well. So I like to be transparent in that aspect so you guys know this is the hardest difficulty. Anyways, um, those are uh, that's what I like to do when it comes to this halfback base. Um, I mean, not have that base, Lord. Have back direct. So the have back direct is good. Uh, you just have to find that nice person. Basically, the sweet spot on ID, and, and normally it is going to be that D tackle. As you can tell, he's the one that's making it. But if you have a better team, sometimes they block better, and all you need them to do is basically block for a second. So real quick, I want to show you at least why I like this. So if you see here, if we just block this D tackle, and most of the time the user is going to try to run away, uh, they won't really try to uh, crash it down like that. So. Um, I'm going to try to control the user on this one to try to get a better simulation for y'all. Uh, we'll still crash them just because. All right, so I'm going to choose halfback direct, but I'm not going to touch the controller for offense. I'm only going to control the user. So most of the time, your user is going to be here, and they're going to try to get out, if that makes sense. And when they try to get out, they're going to try to come back. And if you're able to see that gap, which I talked about this on my first video that I did on this formation. I talked about it. But I want to go over it just real quick. As you can tell, um, if you were able to control them, you'd have more ability to take this outside and every now and again you will bust a long run um with using this so next thing i want to talk about what if they run a zone blitz because you do have to worry about zone blitz but uh let's go with this cover three so most people if they're going to run this cover three blitz they're most likely going to either user this guy or they're going to hide their user right here so if uh, i'm going to do worst case scenario is if they're going to user this guy um so if they do this i'm gonna man myself up to the running back because, um, well, I'm, I'm going to leave him here, manning myself up to the running back. That way, it can simulate the user a little better. So, what I like to do is, uh, if you notice, we ID this guy out here. But if it's zone and that guy blitzes, look at how fast he comes back there, right? So, you're thinking, like, okay, I can't run that. When you notice that slot corner blitzing, because it doesn't happen often. So, when you see it happen, that should tell you that, hey, it's zone coverage, all right? When you see that it's zone coverage, what I want you to do is I want you to take this guy right here, send him in motion, and then snap the ball. All right, don't let him go all the way across. Just literally send him in motion and then snap it. So when that happens, notice how now he gets a jump on him. And now at that point, either you're going to be able to take the ball outside or you're going to be able to cut it up. All right, uh, as you can tell right here. So notice how he's going to come down. He's going to actually get a better block on him. So whenever you send that guy in motion, it corrects him to where you can actually block him. And I'll show you that one more time because it is very consistent when that happens. Uh, so let's slant our line. Here we go. All right. So here we go right here. And again, that's if you notice that guy is just coming on a blitz. So what happens, we'll send him in motion and then we'll go ahead and snap him. And then we'll have this little gap right here, that little lane. And sometimes you can make a guy miss and then you can pick up some big yards. So that's another way 
you can move the ball on this okay notice I'm taking 10 minutes to talk to you about how to move the ball on running it you need to be able to run your way out of mid blitz meaning you don't want them to sit in mid blitz run the ball okay you have to uh, take advantage of the matchups okay so um when it comes to have back direct versus it it still works it still works uh but it's not my favorite i would say but it definitely definitely still works and all, again it all depends on what they're doing with these linebackers and what they're doing with their defensive line how they're slanting but just in theory anytime they run this try to id this tackle when you're running half back direct and they just they block it better when they decide to block that guy it works a lot better sadly they don't block them uh, like they're supposed to every time that's why we id him in the hopes that they will block this guy correctly you can tell they just kind of you know just touched them and that's it but when they do block them correctly uh, which happens a lot less when you're playing heisman but on the other uh difficulties it works pretty good when you do that so oh um, now uh last thing i wanted to show you was what if they play a base cover three as far as uh whether or not blitzing that slot corner um which sometimes it does tell where the guy actually comes and they, you know, play on the outside. But we want to make sure most of your good users, most of your good players when they run this double mug. I don't know why this guy's turned sideways. But when they run this double mug, they want everything to look the same. That's why I'm showing you guys the hardest type. So let's see if we can get them to look the same. There we go. All right. So no matter what, uh, you want to make sure you ID this guy. And then if you do it, notice that he doesn't blitz this time, right? So maybe you're able to stick your foot in the ground. But if you want to... Anytime you know this zone or if you want to mix it up, you have the freedom to keep motion in that guy. All right. So personally, I just like the motion of every time do a little motion and then they just they just block them better. And a lot of times you can stick your foot up in the ground or you can take it outside. It depends on who you have as far as personnel goes. So I spent 11 minutes, uh, 12 minutes basically talking to you guys about the run, because if you just run these two plays, you're good. All right. You, you don't want them to keep blitzing uh, six at you. OK, but. Let's say for some reason off tackle isn't working. Let's say for some reason half back direct isn't working like we want to. Um, but it's doing a good job to where at least maybe they're not blitzing as much. But we'll do worst case scenario. All right. Worst case scenario, maybe, or maybe you're just bored of running the ball. Uh, you want to try to throw the ball. So for one, check out my ebook if you want a whole lot more passing concepts. But for a universal one, meaning you can run this out of any place. So I'm just going to pick strong flood. Uh, it's just, just because it's in my audible list. Now, for this universal setup, what we're going to do is we're going to take X, we're going to put him on a corner route, and we're going to smart route it all the way down. We're going to take R1, we're going to put him either on a drag, or you could put him on a short cross. Now, I personally like the short cross a lot better. And then you're going to take square, you're going to put square on a deep cross. So, personally me, I love the deep cross. Alright, so either I put him on a deep cross, I'll put him on a post, and then smart route it down or I'll put them on a slant. It really just depends. Um, now, uh, my primary, my favorite one, if it's not the deep cross, uh, if you don't have that good of a receiver right here, uh, now if you have a good receiver, put them on a cross. All right, it didn't show, but put them on a cross. If you don't, um, I'm just take this and throw this real quick. If you have a good receiver, put him on a deep cross because he will be able to get off press and be able to get open in the middle of the field. If you do not have a good receiver, let me set this defense up real quick. Uh, this is the setup I want you to use if you do not have good receivers. So, for example, BYU, their receivers aren't very good. So, what I would do is I'm going to take that square. And instead of putting them on a deep cross or a slant, I'm going to put them on a corner. All right, so you want to put them on a corner. You want to take X. We're going to do the same exact setup. We're going to put him on a corner and smart route it. We're going to take R1, either put him on a drag, or you're going to put him on a short cross. Now, if this outside guy isn't already on a fade, just put him on a fade. All right, since he's already on a streak, I'm going to leave him alone. So this right here is the route concept. So no matter whether they play man or zone, we'll have reads open. All right, but this is primarily a man-beaten play right here, primarily. So how you want to block this, okay? If you do not set this up correctly, this guy right here, uh, let me see if I can show you this guy right here with the M on it. He's going to come through clean if you don't set this up correctly. All right. And just to show you that, uh, which all y'all should know mid blitz by now. Um, let me see if I can show you. Notice that he just comes straight through. Now the running back somehow touched him. Sometimes that doesn't happen. So if you want to give yourself the best amount of time in a pocket, this is what I want you to do. Okay. We're going to go back to strong flood. I'm going to set everything up real quick for you. So, and it doesn't take much to set this up. Uh, because we aren't doing too much 
put them on a short cross and then we're good like this. So what I found to work the best is we're going to do a half slide protection. So we're going to slide it uh, to the right. So we're going to slide it away from the running back. And then we're going to ID this end that's to the running back side. Now, that doesn't mean it works perfect every time because it doesn't sadly, but what it does help against is getting the linebacker in the middle blocked. Uh, I found that to be the most effective for me at least is to half slide to the right. Notice the blue is going to the right. And then you have to ID, so to ID, you hold L1 and you press X for ID the mic and then you're able to move it around. And we want to ID this end right here. So again, I'm gonna um, show you right here. So notice that now we have time and if you wanna throw that right there, you can or if you want to throw the quick corner. So how I do my read progressions, okay? So to do my read progressions, I start off here. This is normally my one. And about time he sticks his foot in the ground, you should be able to see if it's open or not. Um, so that's my first read progression. This is also my second right here, so uh, this corner. So if I'm getting hollered at, I love to throw that corner out fast. So I would have already thrown this ball by now. Um, notice how I can't throw this yet. So this is technically my first read, but it depends on where you are and where your user is, how good your user is, but most of the time it's either this my first read or this is my first read. And then this will always be my second read right here. Um, depending on who you have or if, you, if you're good at peeping this, sometimes that streak will get open immediately. So um, anyway, I'll run this for you one more time. And then that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video though. Um, and like I said, y'all, I'm getting ready to come up on football season, so it's going to be harder for me to really get this content out to y'all. but. I'm going to do my best, uh, and I do appreciate all y'all. I really do. Um, but I just want to show y'all this real quick. So with X, we want to slide. Well, first, we want to do our protection. We're going to slide half. So we're going to half slide to the right, and we're going to ID this defense in. Now, it doesn't work perfect, but most of the time, it stops your A-gap nanos, basically. So that's what I found to be the most effective at stopping that. So we're going to half slide to the right, ID this end over here. And then we're going to hit that corner quick. All right. So, boom, we're going to try to pass lead it out there. And as long as you got somebody to hold to the ball, you're normally good. All right. So, uh, I did say that was going to be the last time. But I want to show you one more because I know you guys are probably saying, well, what if they bring him down here? Because most of your good players will bring that guy down. Um, this is where I like to look at that corner route at. But it's not mandatory to look at the corner. Um, as far as the corner, I mean on square when I say corner. So, um, it all just, like I said, just literally depends on who you have. But... This little uh, smart routed corner route, custom stem corner route is very, very good. So anyways, I'll just kind of show you. And again, that, notice that time it doesn't get open. And also notice that time. I don't think I did my protection, actually. Let me see. I don't think I did my protection. Yeah, I didn't do my protection. So this is what happens when you don't do your protection. You get screamed at. But um, be very careful. When they, move, when they start moving this guy down, he'll start to get pressed a lot more. So um, I'll give you one more setup. So if you notice that they're bringing that guy down. So they're bringing them down consistently every time. There are two things I like to do. All right, there's two things. If they're bringing that guy down, I'm gonna go ahead and set up square because every everybody else's route concepts stay the same. So we'll go ahead and set that up real quick. Um, we'll take R1, put them on a short cross still. So they still stay the same, but there's a couple different things I like to do. Um, if they are bringing that guy down, I'll take them and I'll put him on a deep cross if I feel like he is a pretty good receiver, I'll put him on a deep cross. Uh, if not, I'll take him and I'll put him on a streak to start off with. Uh, deep cross or streak, depending on. Uh, Cause sometimes they don't block, they, sometimes they don't guard the streak well whenever they bring him down and press, sometimes. Uh, or I'll take him and I'll put him on a zig. All right, and this is whenever they bring him down to press. And um, I'll show you zig first, and I forgot to set up my protection. But that zig, um, when you get a good throw animation, It'll be good for you to be able to get that open. So it's either a zig, a streak, and then I'll do a deep cross with that guy. Um, and that's if they start trying to press. And also, I like deep. I like the zig too, because it's going to get your eyes to his right side. And sometimes, like I said, you'll have this guy open. So if they press, basically, I don't like the corner out unless you have a good matchup. But most of the time, this matchup is what you're going to want with a zig if they bring that guy down to press. And then most of the time, the user will be here. So you either throw the zig, you have this crosser, or you'll be able to hit this corner out, out the break. All right. Um, and even here, even though I forgot to set up my protection, sometimes they will block it. Sometimes. Sometimes they block it correctly. But you want to make sure you are half sliding. Okay. I can't mention how, I can't stress how important that is. Please slide your line, uh, which I'll show you real quick again. And then I'll be done. Just slide your line to the right, half slide them to the right. 
and then you want to ID this guy. All right, so I'm, not, I'm just gonna snap it, show you, boom, notice how consistent it is, all right? Um, it's gonna give you enough time to hit all your concepts. Obviously, I didn't set anything up, but I just wanted to show you so that way you could see just how you know effective it is. Doesn't mean it's gonna pick it up every time, okay? But it just does a good job of forcing them to act right, <laughs> basically. But anyways, uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this video, though. I do pray you have a blessed day. I'm not sure when my next upload is gonna be, but I'm gonna try to make it as soon as possible. Uh, so y'all just bear with me, please. Um, and I do appreciate y'all. I pray y'all have a blessed day. I'm Ray Jarrell, and I'm out.